Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome back. I'm Van. We are all the LFR family, especially if you already clicked the like button, the subscribe button, the notification bell, all those other things. Hopefully this video is good enough for you to share it, want to share it. I have included the original link of the video that I'm checking out because someone said that I should check out Ty Smith. He was talking about critical race theory. Apparently there was like a two minute clip of him um, at, uh, I guess, a, a meeting somewhere. And I don't know if, I don't know. I'm, I'm just now becoming aware of all these different council meetings and this place and that place. But anyway, he, he blew it up on that, on that particular video. Now I was about to check it out. And then I saw my girl, you know, I saw Candace um, actually interviewing him about this exact same thing. Two birds with one stone. That's just how I, how I feel. These two people are really about that. They're really about getting out there, um, using their voices, using their knowledge that they've been studying this for a great long time. And I would like to see the, um, the both of them discuss this because uh, I believe it's important to my growth. Now, I'm a little selfish in checking this video out because I could have just checked out Ty Smith's video and just um, responded to that. But I would like to see them discuss it and discuss it if that's okay. So hopefully y'all are here for it. Um, again, make sure y'all check out hatsforsale.com. Make sure you put in LFR10 promo code. We got some really nice stuff, guys. We got beanies now that go over your ears, hoodies and everything. That's the welfare boy hoodie. Outwork yesterday and everything, man. Go check our stuff out. You might really like something. Also, we got the Blue Monster Prep sponsorship. Now, I'm only talking about this company because I am proud to be sponsored by them. When you go and look at Steven Crowder's channel, you see that he's also sponsored by a company that's similar to Blue Monster Prep. And when you go to Conservative Twins, they are also, they only got, they also have their own thing where they do the exact same thing through their, through their website. And Blue Monster Prep just pretty much gets you prepared for all of, um, I guess the catastrophes that you haven't prepared for, you haven't planned for, and you can get all your waters and your first aid kits, generators, and all those things. Just put an LFR as the promo code and everything will work out from there. You get free shipping. And if you spend more than a hundred bucks, you're going to get um, gifts that's worth a hundred bucks. I don't get that, but shout out to Patrick and Gina because they are amazing when it comes to that. Okay, we're not going to waste any more time. <laughs> Welcome back. As you all know, the internet is a dark, lonely, horrible, backwards place. But occasionally, some light breaks through. If you have been online in the past few weeks, you are probably familiar with the viral video of radio host and father Ty Smith criticizing the idea of teaching critical race theory at a school board meeting in Illinois. Let's take a look. You going to deliberately teach kids? This white kid right here got it better than you because he white? You going to personally tell a white kid? Oh, the black people are all down and suppressed. How do I have two medical degrees if I'm sitting here oppressed? How do I get, first of all, time up, because I only got five minutes now, not five minutes. Two medical degrees, no mom, no dad in the house, work my way through college, sat there and hustled my butt off to get through college. You gonna tell me somebody that looked like all y'all white folks kept me from doing that? Are you serious? So amazing, wow. everyone, please welcome to the show, Ty Smith. <laughs> okay, first of all, I have to interject. Be <laughs> I should just, I need to go check that video out. Hopefully she shows the entire video because that right there, that hustle, first of all, I commend you. Congratulations. That's phenomenal. Two medical, two medical degrees. What the heck? I couldn't even get through daggone real estate classes and I failed three times. I need to step my daggone game up. Some people are just those type of thinkers and apparently Ty Smith is. That's tremendous. No parents in the house. And you still hustle your butt off for two medical degrees. And he said, you expect for me to, to try to figure out how, how come all these white people uh, uh, hold me back? They not hold me back. These white people ain't hold me back. <laughs> wow, bro. You don't want to hear, you don't want to let black people hear you talking like that because they're going to be like, oh, so you one of them, huh? <laughs> wow. So that was incredible. And I think first questions would just be, what is the backstory to this? Like, what made you decide to go to the school board meeting? Wow. What is the story? I was simply asked to go. And what I was told is that, Ty, there's no one that's in the black community that ever shows up in these school board meetings. And some of the big topics that they talk about is what's going on in the black neighborhoods. And they're trying to introduce this 
type of what they call curricula into the school system that may possibly be teaching kids basically to be racist against each other. And I'm like, what is this? There's like, it's called critical race theory. So different friends of mine handed me different versions, it's almost like a Bible. Like you got the new international version, the King James version of critical race theory. <laughs> and I'm reading through all these things, but once I read through them, the basis of it was they are teaching racism. Wow. They are teaching kids to be racist against each other. And so when I went to this school board meeting, I got to sitting down, I just wanted to hear everybody's take on it because I read it, I got my take from it. I heard people get up and talk about what their take was on it. You had a few, you got some that actually opposed it, but majority were like, they're for it. Like, this is what we need. This needs to be taught because it's our fault what's happened to the black people. Look what we've done. Our forefathers, they're, they, we've, we've inherited their DNA. And because of that, our white privilege, this is what we're doing to the black communities. And as I sat there, no kidding, because I was so in tune with what everybody was talking about, I literally looked around the corner like this over my shoulder. Like, there ain't no black folks in here. Yeah. I was the only one that was in there that was black, and they're actually talking about somebody that looks exactly like me. Mm -hmm. So I let everybody kind of say their piece, and I just like, okay, I'm gonna wait. And after that, I just had to get up and just explode and let these people know you have completely, in other words, lost your mind. If you're gonna tell me that based off the color of your skin, everybody that's still in that room was white, as you seen, I turn around and say, you're gonna tell me one of you white people kept me from doing this. Absolutely not, it's nonsense. And once that was over and done, do you think anybody approached me and said, well, hey, this is where you're wrong at? Right, right. None. I hope you are enjoying. Now, one thing though, one thing I will say is that a lot of times, like when when a black person gets up and, um, and I guess, I don't know, agrees with, with the notion that black people black people are not being held back by white people they come off as the enemy i'm certain i don't even have to know ty smith's history or anything to know what type of things have come his way what type of people people saying certain things about him the names he's been called and all those other things but i applaud him for his bravery when it came to that situation right there first of all there was no black representation in the room but all these white people are trying to put guilt on other white people for black people who aren't being represented in the room. Like it's a private meeting or something like, we are part of the problem. Our forefathers did this to us. Now we need to pay it forward. It's like some type of charity meeting or something like that. That's what it was like. It was some type of charity meeting and he wasn't willing to accept the charity. So he told them, look, nah, I, I don't accept. This ain't happening. And um, this is why. And I think he made his statement. I think he made his point extremely clear. About this, which is, I think, really signifies that there are so many parents, especially black parents, I think, that don't even know that this is being taught and would be similarly outraged if anybody sat them down and said, hey, look at this. Mm -hmm. Look at this documentation. Are you okay? Is this acceptable to you? And I think because it's called critical race theory, you go, okay, maybe they're learning a little bit of history um, or whatever the classes are. They're always called something different that the left is really good at. And yet it's so poisonous to the young minds of the black youth to separate people quite literally to assign attributes to them based on the color of their skin. So how do we get the word out, I guess, is what I'm asking you. Well, one way is simply by actually like how that video went viral. But even before then, I was actually, I'm actually, actually when I say in the video, I'm actually in the community talking to kids, definitely dealing with the parents. Because number one, I always start with the parents first. And of course, we know that 70 some plus percent of all blacks don't have a father in a home. So I know it's a 90 percent chance that the kids that I'm dealing with and the mothers that I'm dealing with, that is not there. So when I talk to these parents, they're usually a lot of young mothers. They don't even have an idea what it is. Mm. So when I when this video came out, they were all like, so what, what, wait a minute, what is it that they're talking about? They're going to be teaching my son. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll tell you what, instead of me just telling you, I want you to read it. And then in a day or two, you come back and tell me, what did you get from that? Mm. No, they're not going to be teaching my son this. And see, even they were able to pick it up. <laughs> but they had no idea that the school system is trying to implement it into this education. And so this is what got me. After that video came out, all of a sudden, Different people that I don't even know of came, well, we're, we're not teaching it yet. We were just thinking about teaching. It's like, oh, it's almost like the equivalence of me seeing a kid being lured away by a stranger with candy. And as he being lured away, I go over there and I bust it up. And the stranger goes, well, I wasn't going to kidnap them or anything. I just wanted to see if he wanted to see my truck. Right. Yeah, that's... <laughs> 
That's exactly right. That is exactly right. So you went to this meeting and somebody said to you, actually, they're sitting here conversing about black people and yet there's no black people there. No. Which signifies, obviously, that they are just operating on a black stereotype, right? This yes. is a stereotype of what a black person is. Yes. And I am the bearer of my forefather's sins, which, by the way, I mean, forget dating back a time of slavery. I don't even want to be responsible for my mom and dad's sins. I'm not inheriting any of that nonsense, right? right? We're, we're individuals and you're responsible for things that you do wrong. Thank you for making that point, Candace. Uh, I pray, <laughs> I pray my kids don't have to pay for my sins, um, nor their mom's sins. I don't know their mom's sins, but the dad used to be ridiculous, used to be ridiculous. And I pray that they don't have to pay for that. They call that karma. I don't know how much I believe in that, but please let me know whatever you want me to know about karma <laughs> in the comments. But yeah, she's absolutely right to go way back to slavery times and feel like you're going to right a wrong from way back then. That right there is that's kind of arrogant. That's that's extremely arrogant in my point, um, in my opinion, as if oh, we need to make this better. Our forefathers who built this country wasn't good enough. We need to write things. OK, so what you, how are you going to write it by giving them stuff? By making sure that they get in the front of the line first. No, no, go ahead. Get in the front of the line. No, go ahead. Mm -mm. It's okay. We're fine. We go, go, go. You're fine. You were, you were enslaved. If a black person is not offended by that. But there is this tremendous amount of white guilt. Right, white guilt. What what do you it, think about that? Because it, it is weird. It's completely what I, what I call white guilt is either you virtue signaling, or it's just is you've been you've been taught to believe something that's completely falsified. You know, you've been you're being told to feel bad about something that you don't even know. You know, you, you're not responsible for. It. So wait a minute. I give you an example. I told people when I saw videos of these different churches doing the same thing where they had I don't know if you've seen it, you probably have where they showed white people bowing down. And having their hands up, telling we're sorry for our forefathers <laughs> and what they did. God, yeah, you know, we, we forgive That's us for what are. And I'm sitting there thinking, like, what in the world is that? So, what I do when I go to neighbors, I told them, what would y'all do if I had every black child that don't have a father in the home? If I got down before all those children and said, I'm so sorry for what the black fathers have not done. I'm so sorry that is that my fault? No, it's your father's fault that decided to leave you. So how, why would I take on the responsibility and take on all that pressure and take on all that pain and put that blame on me for their father not being in the home? Right. And so when you bring things like that to people, they kind of get to thinking like, well, when you put it that way, yeah. So I'm like, so what are you feeling guilty about? Do you actually feel guilty or were you just told to feel guilty? Hey, guys. You were just told to feel guilty is what it was. Man, that was, that was pretty daggone good, to be honest with you, because... Um, this gentleman right here, he had I'm two medical degrees. I'm still hung up on that. You know what I mean? For real. And then looking at there's so many people who has succeeded beyond measure and had successes beyond measure. And, and we just go around and we just still play that victim game. Even the super millionaires out there. I know athletes out there and I'm not going to start name, naming any names because I'm fans of some of them when it comes to their, the way that they play the sport and the way that they raise their families. LeBron James being one of them, but something that they do that throws a little bit of poison into the black community is constantly feeding their victimhood and making them believe that they are behind somehow. We're not behind, bro. No, the only people that are behind are the people who are not willing to bust their tails day in and day out. And all of these people are of different races, different races, different backgrounds, different cultures. And, and, and we, we all make our beds the same. We all go number one, number two, the same, unless we're sick. I mean, you know, we need help that way. But other than that, man, um, so much has happened for us to have to go all the way back to when the worst of the worst was going on and try to live our lives based off of that. That makes absolutely no sense. I am no one's victim. No one is better than me. I'm not better than anyone else. And let's just move forward and try to be better than our, than our past. I mean, that's a, you see the, you see the dag on uh, outwork yesterday, hashtag I had 
That's my competition. My competition is my yesterday. And and when I'm done competing, I'm done competing with my yesterday. I'm fine with coasting based off of my own moves and my own um, levels that I've reached throughout the course of my life. But that's just me, though. Y'all let me know whatever y'all want me to know in the comments below. And if you have yet to hit that subscribe button, please make sure you do so on your way out the door. Once again, guys, I am Van. Now we are all the LFR family, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video, hopefully inside the Patreon as well. Y'all make sure that y'all go over to Candace Owens' um, channel. Um, like her like her page, um, follow her, subscribe to her channel. She always provides really good content. And being that I'm using some of her content for this video, I want to say thank you to Candace. all right? Y'all have an amazing day. Love y'all.